the bell icon to turn on notifications. In this video, we'll get an understanding for how users work in JIRA. So inside JIRA, your billing is going to be based on users, but not necessarily the overall number of users. What you'll be paying for, especially if you're using a JIRA Cloud subscription license, like I am in this course, what you'll be paying for is product access. And probably the first question that I get whenever I explain this to someone who's new to JIRA is, what's the point of a user in JIRA if they don't have access to JIRA? Well, there's a number of reasons why you may want that, but probably the most common reason that I've come across in my experience is if there's someone who is just not a member of the team anymore. You don't have to delete their entire user account. You just revoke access. That way, all their past comments, issues, and things that they've created are still inside of JIRA and still attributed to that user. They just don't have access to anything anymore. They can't log in. You're not paying for access for someone who is no longer on the team. So let's see where we can manage this. And of course, just like everything in this section, managing users requires JIRA administrative permissions. So let's hop into the user management section up here, go to the top right, open this up, and you'll notice that there is a little warning that pops up here. This is something I've noticed in my browser. I use Brave as my browser, and I've noticed this pop up recently. I haven't seen any sort of bugs or any have any problems in this section at all just something that I've noticed pop up. So I'm just gonna close out of that. Now here, of course, we have a list of all of our users, but over on the left side, we have our site access and product access. So site access is where we can control how users get access to Jira. So in here, we can control, we can really narrow it down. You can see I'm limiting the who can get access to Jira based on the domain for their email. Or we could say, you know, any email or any domain will work or don't approve any of them at all, right? So in this case, it would be, you know, new users actually have to be approved by the admin. And so you can come into the access request and you can start to see who has requested access to the site and you can get a fine level of control over who you want inside of Jira. Because again, if, these, if you're approving users, probably the new users are going to have product access, and that's going to be something that will uh, increase your bill. Speaking of product access, over here on the left side, we have that, and you can see by default, new users are going to have access to the product. So when you accept new users in, by default, they're going to increase your uh, user count that has product access and, by extension, increase your bill. So that is definitely something that you'll want to keep tabs on if you want to uh, you know, keep tabs on uh, <laughs> the increase of your bill. Okay, so let's actually add in a new user here. So I'm gonna hop back to users and let's we can invite a user, just click on this here, add in the email address. So I'm gonna invite somebody here. There we go. We can control the role that they have. So by default, we can see what these roles do. By default, the basic access is going to be only what we specify. So in this case, we only want them to have access to Jira, then we can specifically add them to have product access to Jira. Or do we want them to be trusted, which means that they can invite other users. So they could start to add other users, which can be helpful, but again, depending on, uh, or how we want to monitor that, that bill with the product access, uh, we may not want to have trusted a lot of trusted users out there that can also start to you know, add, their, add users on their own. And then of course, there's the site administrator, which is going to be able to um, have all of the billing details. It's, this is pretty, pretty straightforward being an overall JIRA administrator. I'm going to keep this at basic, and I'm going to give Brad, when I invite him, I'm going to give him access to Jira. And we could add Brad into a group if we want to. Uh, we'll look at groups here in a second. Let's go ahead and invite Brad so we can see what it looks like. Okay, so we've invited one user. I'm going to pull over uh, email here so we can see what this looks like on the other end. 
So we can see, okay, this is the email that Brad is going to get. And then we just walk through the process of joining. So click on the link. And if we don't already have a, an Atlassian account, then it'll walk through the process of doing that. If we do, then we could you know, log in here. In this case, let's go ahead and just walk through this real quick. Give them a password. Walk through CAPTCHA <laughs> that we're, we're familiar with there. Go. And there we go. So that is pretty pretty straightforward process for signing up, but we kind of get an idea for, for how it looks on the other end. And then Brad is in there. And then back in the administrative side on Jira, we can see that he has he's in our list, he has product access, and we could add him into a group here. So Groups are going to be how you want to organize things for your users. So let's create a new group. Hop over to the left side, create a group, and let's maybe call this managers. And of course, you know, the, the group name, what how you organize your group is really going to be up to you. Uh, but once we have a group created, then we can come in, add members and say, okay, Brad is part of this add him into that group. And now anything that is shared with that group, Brad will automatically get access to. So if we share filters, if we change permission levels on the group, which we'll be looking at uh, later in this section, then all of a sudden Brad is going to get access to any of those things that's shared with the group. So it's just a faster way of being able to organize the users together. All right. So to recap, in this video, we learned how users and product access in Jira are two different things. We learned how to control the site access settings. We also looked at the process on both sides of how to invite users into Jira. In our next video, we'll look at the administration area for company managed projects. In this video, we'll get an overview of the company managed project administration area. So let's head into our project. And then over on the left side menu at the bottom, we'll find our project settings. Now, if you do not see this, that just means you do not have administrative permissions over the project. I do want to point out that administrative permissions for a project are different than overall JIRA administrative permissions. Right, So if you're an overall JIRA administrator, you're going to have admin permissions over all the projects, but you can also have users in your organization that only have administrative permissions over individual projects. So let's hop in here and get an overview of all the settings you see here. As you can see, there's a lot of different customization that we can do to a project, and really this, uh, this area could be a course in and of itself. But on the details, we have some of the things that we set up when we created the project. So things like the name of the project, if you want to change that, the key. Now, one cool thing about the key is the key does have to be unique because the key is tied to the, the issues themselves. You remember when we were creating the issues, they're sequential, you know, so it'd be marketing dash one, marketing dash two, and so on. If we change the key, then Jira is going to have to re-index everything because it's going to have to change those URLs. But what's cool about it is Jira remembers what the URLs used to be. So if there's a link out there to marketing dash one to that issue, and we update it to something, the key to something else, the URL is going to change, but that old link will still work. It'll still automatically forward. The other key thing I want to point out in this section here is the project lead. So the project lead is really, the primary purpose is really just this right here who the default assignee is. So if you don't want the default assignee to be unassigned, then you can assign it to the project lead. And now any issues that are created in this project, if whoever is reporting that issue does not assign it to somebody at the point of creation, it will automatically be assigned to me, to Dan, because I am the project lead there. So I've worked with teams who have like a point of contact of all of the issues in the particular project get assigned to this person so that they can make sure nothing slips between the cracks and, and delegate that on to uh, somebody else on the team. 
Next, we have the people. Now, I am working with a, a, a free plan here in Jira, so I don't have access to uh, control the user roles on a project level. That's one of the limitations of the free plan. But in here is where you can come in and make a project administrator if we wanted uh, to search, search for certain people or groups, like we learned about earlier, creating a group to automatically uh, give administrative permissions on a project level to maybe all the managers in the organization. We can do that in here as well. Then we have automation. So we will look at automation later on in this section, but just know that in here, think of it kind of like um, if this, then that, or Zapier, if you're familiar with those tools, basically we can come in and say, okay, when all the stories that are tied to an epic are closed, when the stories are closed, then automatically close the epic. We can do that sort of thing. So again, we'll look at automation uh, later on in this section. We have the features, so we can turn on or off some of these features. So turning on or off the roadmap or um, things like that in, in the project. Some of these are tied, you notice when I hover that, over that, it's talking about the board settings. Some of those are tied to the actual board itself. Uh, we looked at that earlier in this course. And then some of these are tied to the overall project. So being able to see the code link on the left side menu if we want to do that or maybe we don't want to be able to see that because we're not really working with code if this is the marketing team probably not really working with code and so we can turn that off and it's not going to show up in the uh, on the project now the summary is kind of an overall view of the current settings right so most of these things are the same thing that we have over here in this left menu so things like the screens the workflows you can see, but this is just a good summary of all of those options that we that we have. And a lot of these in this particular case were set up by the project template that we chose, but in here we can start to customize them. And don't worry, we'll look at changing some of those more common settings later on in this section as well. Moving on, we have the issue types. So these are the issue types that live inside of this project. And here's where we can start to customize that. If we wanted to add a different type of issue or remove one um, from, if we don't wanna have bugs in the marketing team project anymore, we can remove that in here. Then we have the issue layout. So this is where we can control the fields that are on each issue type. So you can see here, the story, epic, task, and subtask are all using the same types of fields, but bugs has the bug issue type has a di or has different fields defined, and what those what Jira uses to define those are called screens, right? So we could come in here and customize that if we wanted to. Now, I want to point out when you notice when I click on this. All of a sudden, I'm taken to a different area. This is the overall Jira administrative backend. So if you are a project administrator and you try to click on that, it won't let you. That just means you don't have overall Jira uh, permissions because this screen can actually be shared across multiple projects, multiple company managed projects. And that's one of the benefits to company managed projects is being able to share things across there. Of course, in order to change a lot of that, you have to have overall Jira administrative permissions. Next, we have our workflows. So we looked at workflows uh, earlier. Basically, these are going to be the statuses and those transitions between the different statuses and how they are controlled in this project. And then screen, we just looked at screens here so we can see the screens that are currently being used in this project. Then we have our fields. So these are the fields that are being used in this project, right? So what are what fields do we want and which screens do they show up on? This is something that very quickly, again, will start to jump you into the JIRA, the overall JIRA administrative side, because these configurations can be shared across multiple projects. But in here on the project side, we can see which, uh, which what our configuration is for this project. And if you are not an overall Jira administrator, then you, you know, talk to your Jira administrator to customize this if you want to do that. Next, we have the components. So we looked at, or we talked about components earlier. We don't really have any in here right now, but if you think of a component, uh, kind of like maybe your website is the project, but your payment processing might be a component of the project. So then you can have all of the different issues that are associated with that component, the payment processing, 
part, perhaps, and then can all be grouped together to be able to see all of that. It's just a nice way of organizing the issues in your project. Next, we have integration with Ops Genie, which is another Atlassian product, and that's kind of outside the scope of this particular course. Um, but we can control some of that and how Ops Genie works with our project here. Then we have the permissions. This is pretty straightforward. Uh, you can go a little more in depth with permissions here rather than on the people menu in there. But in here, we can set up the permissions for this project. So which users can actually browse the project? Who can actually see it? Who can manage the sprints on the boards for this project? And we can start to customize a lot of that and, and choose how we want the, um, the features inside of our, our project to be controlled and who can control them. So this is not only going to be uh, users, but you can also do groups or things like that as well. Next, we have the issue security. So issue security is not enabled by default, but if you wanted to hide certain issues from some users in the project, you can do that in here. Uh, for example, I've done this before for teams uh, when we had like customer feedback. It was something our customer service team could create and work with issues, but they weren't uh, visible to anyone else until they decided what they were going to do with them. Right. So this is something you can control uh, who can and who cannot view issues, essentially. Then we have notifications. So what sort of notifications happen for the issues in this project? So you can see right now and by default, uh, anytime an issue is created in this project, all the watchers who it's currently assigned to, who reported it, they're going to get notifications. Again, you can see here, this is the default notification scheme that is shared by three projects. So as with a lot of these um a lot of the configurations for the project, if we were to jump into start to edit this, because it's shared by multiple projects, we have to have overall JIRA permissions. Then we have the development tools. So in here we can we can start to link other tools. So we can link, you know, Bitbucket or GitHub or whatever we may want uh, into JIRA. Then we have issue collectors. So issue collectors are really, really cool. They're basically a form that you can put on your website in order to collect issues, right? I mean, that, that's where the name comes from. So you say so you put the form on your website and then it'll pop up and, and when somebody creates or fills out the form, basically what Jira does on the back end is it automatically creates an issue. And in here, you can configure what sort of fields there are, what, uh, where, where it goes in the project, what type of issue, what issue type it is, and, and so on. Because usually... You know, on, on the front end of a website, you know, if you're having customers fill out this form, they don't need to select the issue type. They don't need to select the priority level, who it goes, who gets assigned to, and, and things like that. So you can start to uh, customize a lot of that in here. And then, of course, we have Slack integration, being able to integrate the issues and notifications on that happen inside this project to your team's channel inside of Slack. Whew. Okay, so to recap, in this video, we've really just scratched the surface at the types of customizations that you can do with your projects here in Jira to get things set up for how your team needs. And all of this is just for the one project that we're inside of right now. And hopefully, now the gears are starting to turn with ideas for how you can customize your own company-managed projects. Now, in our next video, we're going to get a look at workflows in Jira. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.